Hello world and welcome to another video. Come for the education, but please stay for the motivation. Today's video is a continuation of our series on cracking the coding interview, and today we're solving a problem called intersection. Feel free to pause this video to read through it and make sure you understand it, but I find the examples a lot more descriptive. Also, keep in mind that this also happens to be a lead code problem, which we solved in the past. We solved it, this is the solution right here, using a hash set. However, using a hash set is O of A plus B time and O of A plus B space. But this time we want to solve it using constant space O of one. And there's a more efficient way to solve it, which we're going to see today. But quick pause. Today's motivation is from Babe Ruth. And he says, it's hard to beat a person who never gives up. Hey guys, I know learning is very difficult. And software engineering and software programming is actually not the easiest profession to be totally honest. But as long as you keep working every day, you practice only just a little bit. You don't have to do too much, just a little bit. You write one line of code, two lines of code. You just wake up every morning and keep working towards your goal. It's very hard to beat a person who never gives up. Back to the problem. I feel like the best way to solve this problem is by showing you guys the actual solution. And here is the solution. So again, we're given a list, actually two lists, L1 and L2, where they kind of meet somewhere from this visual. Okay, they have an intersection. Our job is to find that node where the intersection is. And here's the code on how to do it. Here's the function intersection node. And it takes in the head of both these two lists. The first, we're just gonna walk through this code and show you guys how it works. So the first line of code says A and B equals L1 and L2. So all we're doing here is just creating two pointers, pointer A and pointer B. Pointer A points to L1 right here, and pointer B points to L2. Then we go into the while loop, while A is not equal B. Obviously A and B are not equal, right? Because A points to node one, B points to node two. They're two completely different nodes. So we're gonna go into the while loop and keep iterating. First, we're gonna check A. If A equals none, A obviously is not equal to none. It's equal to node one, right? So we're gonna go to the else block, not the if block. So the else is gonna say, just move A forward. We're gonna move A forward. It's a similar situation for B. If B is not equal to none, Okay, if B equals none, do some bullshit, but B is not equal none in this case, B equals two. So we're gonna go into the else block, okay? And then we're gonna move B forward, B equals B dot next. So B also moves forward. So now we're gonna go back to the top of our while loop. Check again, now A and B not equal? Yes, they're still not equal, right? A is two, B is four. So we're gonna keep iterating. We're gonna check is A equal none? No, A is not equal none. So like the last iteration, just move A forward. Never is not equal none. So now A points to node three. Same thing for B. If B is not equal to none, just moving forward, okay? So now B points to node five. So we're gonna go back to the top of our while loop again. They're still not equal. A and B are not equal. So we're gonna keep it rating. We're gonna move A forward because it's not equal to none, just like the code says. And we're gonna move B forward too because B is not equal to none. So then we're gonna go back to the top of the while loop again. Check again. Are they not equal? See, are they still not equal? A is pointing at four. B is pointing at none. Is A pointing at none? No. We're gonna to go to the else block, right? So we're just gonna move A forward. So A now points at five. So then we're gonna check B. Is B pointing to none? Yes, B is pointing right to none. So what do we do when he's pointing none? We're just gonna restart him at L1. Remember, B first started pointing at L2, but if he gets to none, we're just gonna cycle him around to L1. So B now moves to L1. We're gonna keep iterating. We're gonna go back to the top of the while loop. They're still not equal. We're gonna keep moving forward. A moves forward and B moves forward. Then we're gonna ask ourselves, are they, we're just gonna go back to the loop. Obviously still not equal. I think I wrote A and A twice. So let's change that to B. The second one is a B. It's still not, they're still not equal. So we're gonna go back into the loop. Check is A equal none? Yes, A is equal none in this case. So we're just gonna restart A at L2. Remember A started at L1, but we're just cycling him around. You see what we're doing? We're just moving A and B around, cycling till they meet each other. And they are definitely bound to meet each other if we do this long enough. Also, we're gonna go to B. B is not equal to none, so we move him forward. So now B points at three. Then we're gonna go back to the top again. Is A and B not equal? Yeah, they're still not equal, right? B points at three, A points at two. We're just gonna move both of them forward because we know both of them are not pointing to none. So A is gonna move forward and point at node four. B is also gonna move forward and point at node four. So now we're gonna check, is A not equal to B? Nope, they are equal, right? So this while loop is going to break. And now we're gonna return A. To be honest, we can return B, not A, cause again, they are equal. So you can literally say return B, not A. So which is this node right here, we are gonna return. That is the node where the intersection of those two link lists starts. So let's see what this looks like in our code editor. Again, I've gone ahead and created the node class, which is the building block of our link list. The link list class, which is pretty much what we're working with. 
the append function which is how we append to our linked list the append node function which is necessary in this example because we need to append that intersecting node to build our linked list the display function i took the display function out of the linked list class because it was easier to display him that way and now this is the actual function we just walk through this is the actual function we just wrote on the white paper and walk through and in the end rather than return i'm displaying b like i said you can return a or b it doesn't matter here i created the intersecting node which is just four and five kind of like the example we had our intersecting node is four and five and then i'm creating our link list one which is one two three and then i'm adding the fourth node which is our intersection nodes head which is four right so technically i'm adding four and five to him i do the same thing for b i created two and I'm adding the head of the intersection node to him. So B also points to the intersection node. Then I go on and display two lists, L1 and L2, which you can see right here. And you can see the intersection is four and five, four and five. And then this is our function. Once you call it and run this program, it returns this. Let's go ahead and change it just to see what happens. Let's change the intersection node to contain maybe something, let's say string A17. Let's run this code and see. As you can see, it returns our intersection correctly. Also, this is the lead code solution. Again, the same solution we wrote, uh, but this time I'm just adding a check up here saying, hey, just in case we get an edge case where our first link list is just none, right? There's no link list, empty link list, and our second link list is also empty none. If any of them is empty, just return none, right? Because if one link list has nothing, th there's no intersection between those two. Okay, that's all I added, this edge case, because lead code has, in one of its test cases, it is this edge case, and without it, we're gonna fail. Also keep in mind that we called it L1 and L2, but they call it head A and head B, but technically the names don't matter. So let's go ahead and submit this code and see, see what happens. Boom, 82% time, 81% space. So that's for the video, guys. I hope it was helpful, and I'll see you for sure in the next one.